Hey, it's Chris, Leisure Games. Let's do this, right? Upcoming week, we got like 12 or 13 games that I know of that are launching in the next like seven days or so. So this is gonna be a little bit longer video than I was hoping for because you know, it's, it's a lot of work, right? Anyway, so why am I wearing Catan? Not because I like board games, but because my two-year-old's favorite color is yellow and he chose out shirts this morning because we've been up since 5.55. Anyway, this is what you need to know this week. Comprehensive information on what's launching when, why you should be thinking about it, what interests me, what concerns me, everything else in between along the lines with some commentary that you get for free. If you haven't done the YouTube thing, click there, subscribe it, like it, comment down below, let me know what you're interested in, and we'll go from there. I love talking about board games, let's do this. Okay, first up, biggest one of the week. It's gonna raise the most money, it's got the most people following, it has 39, nearly 40,000 people following it, which is insane. Tainted Grail, Kings of Ruin, one of Wake and Realm's biggest properties. Now this is gonna be the 2.0 version. Now, I say that both literally and uh, figuratively because they're giving Tainted Grail, the original, a redo-ish. They're making a 2.0 version, essentially. A literal 2.0 version. And this is a sequel expansion. So the question is, with this one, with things like Sleeping Gods, Kingdom Rush, anything in that line, do you actually even need the first one? Is the first one just going to be more inferior? Or, you know, like I have concerns about, you know... I was not a big fan of Etherfields. If you missed my review of that earlier in the week, it was just trying to do too much with too much. And Awakened Realms, that has been their biggest problem. They have trouble sometimes reining in the scope of things. They just are so excited and so uh, wanting to bring so many things at the same time that it sort of leads to some things being muddled. And that's my fear with something like this, that they're saying, okay, yes, we're going to have all of this. And you can get all of um, the quotes here. Uh, it's going to be, it's a billion times better. A billion times better. There you go. Um, some of the best writing in any game book or video game. So I've read some really good writing in books. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Um, <laughs> the hype is over 9,000. Going Super Saiyan on the hype on this one. Um, yeah, you're going to get something for following early, and it's going to be a great value for the core pledge, like I've literally said on every Awakened Realms campaign. That's not a surprise. It shouldn't be a surprise. But there's going to be four, well, there's probably going to be at least three expansions that you can count on with this, to some varying degree. I always give Awakened Realms kudos because they separate out their miniatures from their content, so you can get the, a lot of the bulk miniatures for extra their miniatures are top notch but i remain to be a little bit slightly skeptical of the campaign because well we go over to um another previous game of theirs that's why i say take all quotes with a significant grain of salt lately just because i mean if you go over to other quotes from ether fields which i would vehemently disagree with a lot of these quotes. I think it's worth looking at these quotes on pages now years in the making out and see how they compare because, you know, that's really what stands the test of the time is looking back on those quotes and how accurate were they, not how accurate are they at the time. So that's why I want to point out quotes, not to throw shade on anybody, but to say, take that for what it's worth at the time of things. Do you still feel that way about the game two or three years later? That's why I do the videos the way I do, because I want you to be happy with your purchases and very content with the way the game plays. You're going to get a big stretch goal box. You're going to get all the other stuff that goes along with it. They put up a whole bunch of stuff here already on the, the page. I mean, there's, there's plenty of stuff. Now on GameFound, later at retail. There you go. I, you can check out all the information. There's a 2.0 update pack for someone like me who has it, who... <laughs> I feel really weird about this again. A 2.0 update pack. You're coming out with this, like, what, two or three years later, a 2.0 update pack? Like, this is what they should have done immediately within the last year of it coming out. So I should have been done with ether fields almost immediately when people had... Anyway, so that's my concern is that you're giving me an update pack, but it's taking this long to get updated when you realize that there are core issues with things. That is my biggest concern when it comes to this across the board. I'll leave it at that. There's a follower gift, shipping's down at the bottom, whatever, it's shipping. Again, my policy on shipping is if you if your shipping is concerning to you, you shouldn't be backing it in the first place. 
getting a retailer pledge from one of your local uh, game stores or picking it up on retail. So if you can, or just miss out. And that's completely okay too, because we all have too many games. Next up, we're going to stay with GameFound. We're also going to go to the Temple of Horrors, which is relaunching. This is the 2.0 version as well, launching on the 27th. Geochicks, this is a innovative, they say, dungeon crawl. Um, you know, again, how revolutionary is your combat system when you're using that term? When you use hype terms, I'm going to expect hype results. That's the point of these videos, right? If you tell me the writing is the best of you ever read, well, it better be that, right? Anyway, stretch goals are included, metal coins are included, and it's just going to be what it's going to be. Roll and calculate and apply. I, I mean, okay, it's a roll and calculate. So it's maybe not as innovative as you may like, but then there's a dungeon map. There's a ton of information on this page, folks. If you want to check this out, you know, I'll be going the whole breakdown with the rules uh, on the day it launches, but right now there's too much to speculate and it's going up against heavy competition this week, even on GameFound. The overview it gives you here by placing the room tiles in their displays, it gives me more of a dungeon universalis or that other like dungeon crusade one, if you will which again, I worry about with these crawls that you're adding so much that the complexity to get in becomes too much. I mean, Dungeon Universalis, if you missed me talking about that one this last week on the roundup from yesterday's video, which I'll link in the comments wherever, um, 140 page rule book. That's gonna be a barrier to entry no matter how good the game is, right? Exploring, combat, um, allocating points to do damage. There's just a lot of stuff. So take it for what you will. Uh, I really need to see why this stands out more than just a slightly unique combat system. Show me what you got here. Show me what you got, Temple of Horrors. Then we're going to go over here. This is Materia Prime, the Inquisition expansion. Materia Prime is a previously crowdfunding game. This is taking a previous um, base game, the Alchemist's game, where you are basically creating a la alchemy, uh, science and magic uh, together to do a cooperative management in a modular system. And this is then combining now the religion and the state within that system as nuanced aspects that you will be utilizing again in that same cooperative manner. You're basically trying to create the Philosopher's Stone. So in case that sort of um, theme sounds familiar to people, or in case that seems to have overlying arching uh, resemblance to an anime that's out there, um, <laughs> it kind of does a little bit. You know, you're creating the Philosopher's Stone. You've got some homunculi. Anyone else where I'm going with this? You know, Full Metal Alchemist. Anyway, so that's basically, if you just took the theme of it, that's the similarity, but it's cooperative and it's helping each other, not like... <laughs> Speaking of that, like, we don't have a good Full Metal Alchemist game. Like, can you imagine, like, an asymmetric skirmish-type Full Metal Alchemist game? Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. This is what League of Games is all about on the channel. So this is launching its latest expansion on the 27th. It has a relatively respectable 7.4 rating over on Board Game Geek, but it's one of those that's always just kind of flown under the radar. It was a little bit too complex for me at the time it first came out because I wasn't really this much of a heavier gamer, but it's one that I'm going to give a heavier look-see from a cooperative element as I've expanded my horizons in terms of what I like and what I don't like now with games. So that's why I'm going to be intrigued to see what it can offer to us. Now, next up, we're going to be going over to the 27th as well with Draft and Write Records from Inside Up Games. You may know them from other previous titles that killed it on crowdfunding, like Summit over on GameFound previously, as well as Earth, as well as Block and Key, which reminds me I haven't done a video on Block and Key yet. Anyway, this is a Draft and Write game. <laughs> it's literally in the title what you're going to be doing in this game. This is the only image on Board Game Geek, and the description is basically just that. Draft your band, draft your production, back, draft your backstage people, and produce records and songs and win the most fans and money in sort of a roll and write esque aspects. So, this is, you know, if done right, is a really great thing because we've seen that the rise of really good roll and writes in the last six months to a year. And so, I'm intrigued to see what Inside Up Games, with uh, those three games that I already mentioned, of their track record of putting out quality stuff can bring us. So, there you go, there's that one. Then we also have here, self-published, coming on the 26th, this is Mastermind's Heist Society, where you're a mastermind taking on your own team of operatives, uh, as they say here, Ocean's Eleven, Inside Man, Baby Driver, and basically just playing that as a card game. Two to five players, uh, recruiting your team, getting the payouts, and allowing multiple play styles, depending on how you choose to do the heists in the first place. Uh, they run through all of the types of cards, the four types that you're going to be reutilizing here, and then hopefully a little bit of an entertaining game. 
Uh, this is their own independent website. I'll put the link down below. It's on Tabletopia. You can read the rulebook as well. So I definitely have this one on my radar too as sort of potentially a sleeper hit. It gives me more of the vibe of uh, Age of Inventors or Factions of Soul from a couple weeks ago uh, that sort of have flown under the radar but look like very, very solid offerings. So we'll see what it looks like when it launches on the 26th. Then we also have Redwood, which is also launching on the 27th from Sit Down. This is sort of an animal collecting slash capturing game, only if you can't see the picture at the bottom there, uh, via photography, actually, which is a quite unique mechanic. The rule book is actually up over on Board Game Geek, and this is probably the other huge sleeper hit for me of the week that could be very potentially up my ilk of 45 to 60 minutes, one to four players, where you're creating a diorama, right? I only worry with some of the components here, as you can see listed in the rule book, that the price point might be a little bit higher than what people want from a deluxification. So, you know, you've got these little miniatures, you've got these little pawns, and you've got some 3D elements standwise here that are going to be, again, probably a little bit higher on the production side of things. You can see that what the setup looks like. And you can see how you're actually be playing the game and taking your turns of choosing your templates, moving your photographer, and then taking the photos of said animals as you move around these various sort of movement points that you're going to be slowly encroaching in on. And the Puma apparently here is going to be in one of the expansions that they already have planned. So uh, all in all, check out the rule book. I'm really impressed by this so far, and I can't wait to see what the really the content looks like. And this one is high on my list of things I might actually be very interested in if the price point and the exclusivity of why getting it now is there on the 27th, actually, Redwood. Now, this one is still under flown under the radar, and I'm not sure how many people are going to be widely knowing of this one. Rumor has it Stronghold Games uh, is putting out Terraforming Mars, the dice game here, in case you can't see this, uh, on the 27th. Uh, it's going to include some sort of uh, corporate era expansion, and it's an uh, engine building game of Terraforming Mars just with dice now. I love Ares Expedition, truth be told, and I backed all the expansions for Ares Expedition, and I said, I'm never going to get the original. How is dice going to fit in there, right? How is it going to fit in there? Uh, rumor has this is also going to be launching the 27th as well. You can see by the lack of knowledge of this pr campaign. I mean, 316 followers right now. That's insanely low. So if it's really launching at that point, you haven't seen any hype for it or any, uh, you know, notability from that aspect. So hopefully it does launch. Hopefully we can see. I mean, those dice look cool. Uh, same color scheme, same uh, pattern as the cards in Ares Expedition. So how is it going to be that much different? And will I actually have an appeal for it if you've already got one, the other, or both? So we'll, we'll see. But okay, I'm intrigued at least. I'm peaked. What else we got? You know what's great? When you completely forget about a game that's launching and that you really have another sleeper hit on your hands here. This is Aegean Sea from Carl Chud. I'm going to mispronounce it. You know the name. The name is familiar. The design pedigree is there. This is going to be a very interesting game where you are taking on one of five different nations. And why is this so intriguing, even with the prototype? Because it takes a completely different spin on things. Each card, each card that you play can be a boat, a good, a person, an island, however you like four or five different things that you can utilize it as. So that's where this intriguing concept is coming from. And you can see how you start to layer them around the outside of the cards based on how you use them as the cards themselves. This is a prototypical hand management. How are you going to play things outwit, out maneuver your opponent? Because you have these different nations and island decks, and you're going to be basically trying to outdo each other. I have no other details than that, but I know this one's been in the works for a while. And so I'm really awesomely intrigued by this one as well. This is another that if, you know, the iron strikes hot, you know, in the right place, boom, I'm backing a lot more stuff at the end of September than I ever thought I was going to be. Because speaking of other things that are intriguing to me, Ghosts of Candy 2, the Roll and Fright. Another Roll and Fright. Roll and Fright cred. Roll and Right. Aegean Sea, actually, by the way, is also launching on the 25th. Uh, Ghosts and Candy here is launching on the 27th. And this is from 25th Century Games, which has a, had a slew of uh, recent run of really decently, you know, well thought of products, whether it's Ra, which is amazing. And then also Evolutions and Space Explorers. This is a roll and write where this is based on the original game, Ghost Love Candy, now taking it uh, with the different uh, spin roll, if you will. 
Now, interestingly enough, it's set actually over on Kickstarter as opposed to the last one, the Space Explorers and Evolutions, uh, Prehistories Evolutions being on GameFound. Uh, this is going to be offering three different games of three different varying complexities. Again, utilizing the same ghosts, candies, and premises of the original base game. And it's going to be a print and play only. So the price is going to be very reasonable. And if the gameplay is there, this is another one where, again, like I just mentioned, resurgence of rolling rights. Boom, 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 boom. You can see myself backing this one as well. Uh, because I don't have enough of those that you can just laminate and keep around forever and ever for a low, low fund to pay ratio. I don't use that term enough. Anyway, launching on the 27th as well. Also launching on 27th, we have Elevenses. This is apparently an expansion for Elevenses. This is a tea time based game where you have 11 cards in your hand, hence the name of the game, and you are playing them one by one. Each of them have asymmetric powers. Uh, the lower the card number, the stronger the power though, because at the end of the game, or when the round ends essentially, someone plays their Elevenses card. And that's a power that just ends it. Basically then you tally up the number of points or, or based on the cards in your hand, and depending on you know how you do, obviously you're gonna be wanting to play more powerful cards to get more advantages. But if you have better points, then you know how do you do that dynamic? And this is going to be an expansion for this, which is gonna be launching on the 27th, apparently. There's nothing in Board Game Geek, but the expansion's name, I believe, is called Guilty Parties. So if you have any interest in it, give it a look-see. Then also launching on the 27th, we have a game called Mind Your Business. Now this is an interesting twist on things. This is sort of a path building resource management style game where you're trying to dig in this mine and avoid a goblin that's eating, maybe not gems necessarily, but trying to eat the gnomes that you are representing. And if any of your gnomes get eaten, you all lose, but you also wanna have the most gems at the end. So uh, you're trying to manage this path because the goblin can wreck the path, but you can also, if you're tricky and clever enough, you eliminate the goblin from the game so you don't have to worry about it. You can see a little bit of what it looks like here with the meeples as well as the spatial elements and the paths that you're gonna be building across the board in order to mine those gems. Uh, so we'll kind of see. I always have mixed feelings about the semi-cooperative nature, you know, in that sense, because uh, do you really do it? I mean, it's like Marvel Legendary, right? Because I just kind of ignore that. You either win or lose in Marvel Legendary. We don't play whoever scores the most points in my house. That's just me. And I know other people echo that comment when it comes to Marvel Legendary. So does that change in a game like this for you? You do so by basically uh, taking these tiles and manipulating them, swapping them, rotating them, moving them in order to gain the best or clearest path to your minecart when you place your minecart in line with said path in the first place. This one is actually launching on the 28th, the day after the rest of these. And then last up on the 27th, we have a game called Forgotten Willows. Two to four player action selection game where evil wizard has invaded the realm and only the fairies remember how to uh, fight him off and they need to gather magical artifacts in order to do so. Um, what you see is what you get. I don't know much more details about this game. You can kind of uh, take a look at what they've got going on here. I'm sure we'll see more details when it launches. Uh, there's no other information. There's a five minute, very short how to play video on Board Game Geek. Otherwise, we'll have to wait and see when it launches on the 27th. There you go. That is everything launching that I know of, at least so far this week. Actually, you know what? I didn't do. There's a game called Iron Thunder. Okay, there is one more that I didn't talk about that's uh, launching as well. This is a game called Iron Thunder, World War II strategic war game, uh, two to four players, three different modes, uh, where you're going to be taking tanks, infantry, you know, just armies, and fighting them in a skirmish style manner. Weather, battlegrounds, uh, resources that you're going to have to deal with. And again, it's launching on the 27th, but it's sort of the war skirmish type game. So, Liege isn't really that familiar with them, but you know what? I thought I'd include it at the very, very end here for you guys. So uh, let's go to what else we got. Okay, let's do a little campaign update. Only four days, well, just under four days, left to go with Winds of Exchange, the latest from Keyforge. Now they're doing something uh, distinctly different here as well. They're saying there's an unchained deck. Unchaining deck, meaning there's no rules to that deck. You know, all of the decks, although they're completely randomized, there are rules, like it has to have certain this, certain that, certain this certain that balance and that and unchanged is just saying hey we're giving you more of i think it's kind of what the equivalent of like legendaries and epics and rares and things like that like higher level just extreme epic epic the card game sort of stuff you know that sort of thing it's just completely off the chains hence unchained i didn't actually try and do that again i'm not that smart to be able to put a sentence together like that prehand <laughs> prehand see see what i mean it goes from one end of the spectrum to the other with my commentary but that's what I'm sort of wondering about right now. And I wish that you could get at a lower pledge level some of the free stuff. Like, you get a free unchanged deck, but the lowest pledge level is this $50 one, which is what, like, uh, two decks? Yeah, a two-player starter set and one deck here, which will get you another, like, I think another one of these and another unchained. 
So you actually get like five decks for 50 bucks. So that's not a bad price. But I kind of wish there was just something lower where it could just buy like one set of the Unchained. Because all I really want is a bunch of Unchained, like two or four Unchained decks. And this one, though, you have to get six to $65, which is going to get me like what? Like actually seven. But, you know, I'd love seven decks. But again, the problem with Keyforge is that you just don't know what you get. And it could just be there. And these aren't tournament use, they say. So now they may do a special tournament because, I mean, obviously, if you overpower everything, it's not going to fit in well with the regular powered stuff. But that's what I want sort of out of Keyforge. Um, so, it, I mean, it's a cool thing, though. It's a cool thing. And I like the idea of it. I just can't see myself. Well, I'm going to go back and forth on this one. I won't lie. Ghost Galaxy, you've got me hooked. Uh, the overpowered things, just the crazy stuff has me hooked, lined, and synchred all the time. So that's uh, Wind Forge. <laughs> Wind Forge. See, I'm doing great. Wind of Exchange Keyforge. I'm leaving that in because it's fun to leave in there because everything else just, you know, uh, gets edited out in the other videos. And you got to be human in these videos too. Philosophy, um, Quality Beast. It's got a long way to go. 33 days left, but it's about 40% of the way done. So. Uh, we're going to see where this abstract goes. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of big market for abstracts on crowdfunding. And I say this as an abstract lover. I say this as you just got another abstract in the mail literally yesterday. It's a nice arrow based comboing situation where you're moving these tiles and trying to fill up tic-tac-toe style. It is what it is. So take that for what you will. Thought I'd just at least put it back on people's radar. Speaking of lost things, this is Rise of the New Sovereigns, uh, Atlas Lost from a uh, Japanese designer from Aqua Garden in Ostia. And they have hit over 1,500% of their funding goal, which he's adding a whole bunch of little uh, upgrades. Upgrades to wooden tokens for the base pledge. And that's not inexpensive, right? For Now, this is the complete pledge. What is the complete pledge right here? I happen to actually have it pulled up, which is $88. But I guarantee you the price for this is going to be much higher. He's got some exclusive stuff here, which again, if you know the Aqua Garden situation, it's a lot higher price-wise, even if you can get it from his online store after the fact. Um, it's got $143,000, which is insane. This is a tech tree comboing strategic game though. And so when I got into the nitty gritty of the rules, when I did it for the roundup, um, it's probably a little bit too strategic heavy for me, but I really give it a shout out for putting solid stuff out there, especially from the Japanese market and designers. So, uh, next up Fox experiment, Fox experiment, uh, with a week left, uh, probably be ending when you guys view this video next week, if you're tuned in still. Uh, almost a half a million dollars. That's impressive for a non-exclusive content gameplay game. So with that all being said, I mean, it looks like a great game. This, along with Sagrada Artisans, which we'll talk about in a minute too, is almost at 150,000. I, I just look at them both and I go, I think those are going to be great games. I think they're both really appealing to me as a person who loves these types of games, but I don't see any reason for me to spend the extra because I am not as big on some deluxifications. I I'm just not. And that's okay. You know, we pick and choose all the time about which ones we want to support this way and which ones we don't. I would be lying to you if this wasn't really tempting to me. And, you know, I'm backing Daybreak right now, as I talked about in the video yesterday over on BackerKit, for just that reason. Like, I think it's a really cool concept, and I think I really want to support them on crowdfunding. And I'm still going to support Pandasaurus here, but it just might be at retail. So the only question I have is if you, and this is maybe my biggest dilemma too, is if I looked at this and I said $60, yeah, you know what? This is nice. I like this. I could do it for $60, but I don't want the five to six player expansion. And then if you want the six, five to six player expansion later, it's going to be hard to match. So uh, anyway, I like this, just the wooden Fox meeples. I actually like those better than the screen printed ones. That probably makes me um, an outlier or an aberration, but I just like that. So yeah. I don't need uh, I don't need the five to six player. I like the five to six player idea in my head, but I just don't play five to six players. I don't, you know, I'm lucky if I get four on a great night and they're unlocking a whole bunch of stuff with the designs and the, you know, everything there. So take it for what you will. I'm going to get this game eventually. It's going to end of my collection. I'm going to trade for it. I'm going to buy it at retail, but there you go. Let's just go straight to Sagrada Artisans. I wasn't planning on it, but it's got seven days left. It's also ending in a week when you watch this video next week. And it's 200% its funding goal, almost. And I don't really know. I mean, again, I think it's probably just a price point. This is an expensive game for a legacy-esque game. And, uh, you know, it's also a lighter game that's getting a legacy component. So those two Venn diagram overlaps are just not always as large of niche as some of these others. So uh, where are we at in terms of... I don't know if they did any stretch goals here. I didn't really see a whole lot. I didn't really think they were doing a whole lot. So... Uh, it just kind of is what it is. They're saying, okay, this is what you're going to get. So, yeah. Okay, wait, 150000 the one. 
uh, 96 more window patterns. So, okay. So you're just going to get 12 new designs. Uh, so, yeah, they're going to hit that. The only, I don't see exclusive there, so I'm guessing maybe an extra retail pack or something along those lines uh, if you pick it up at retail like me. But if you're like me also, from the legacy side of things, you can't get through them anyway. So that's the other reason. Like, that's the truth of it. I, I just can't get this played. I don't have the... My wife is like, play the same game 12 times in a short period. Looking at me like I'm crazy, right? Crickets. Anyway, so what else we got going on here? Atlas, we already talked about. Uh, Merchant's Cove. Um, I'm debating about picking this one up in the secondary market. Uh, you know, I've seen a couple of people selling it on the secondary market for relatively cheap, much less than the all-in here uh, from the first time around. But I just can see myself hitting or missing with this. And I, I just don't know if I want to spend $100 on a hit or miss game when I've got like, um, in case I'll plug it here, I, my Patreon, I just showed them uh, last night a video where I've got literally five games uh, that I need to play slash review in the short future. And, uh, you know, things are coming in like that. And so do I really need to buy something else like this that I, you know, requires a lot of asymmetry and a lot of repeated play? The answer is no. And that's why I haven't been able to pull the trigger. I love the idea of this game. I would love to end up with this game in my collection. It's more like a, a more accessible root. For someone like myself, as opposed to Root, which I actually want to play, but just, again, don't have the core group for, despite owning almost everything for Root now. That was a mistake, probably, but I won't own up to it live. Um, I love the actual asymmetric mechanisms in these new ones, more so even than the ones in the base game. And that's why it was really tempting for me from more from that standpoint. But it's a pretty penny. It's going to cost you a pretty penny. The $69, I'd say, is well worth it because of the exclusives that they've thrown in here. But you don't have to get it either. You're not missing out on a ton. I think at retail, you can still easily have a complete game. So yeah, take it for what it is. It's doing great. And they're hitting a bunch of stretch goals right here. Where are we at? Just a bunch of more cards are getting added. Uh, cards, 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 solo cards, uh, corruption cards, individual cards, everything cards. So there you go. That's that. Ah, uh, Lying Pirates. I will be having a video out shortly at the beginning of the week, middle of the week. Uh, I need to have it out before the end of the week because I have a copy. I need to play it. I need to get it played more, and I need to tell you my feelings on it, hopefully in a short video, short and sweet, with a couple of these, because you've got six days left to decide whether or not this party-esque Lying Pirate type game, Lying Pirate, because you are literally, literally, acting as pirates who are lying to each other, bluffing, using dice, and navigating around this square board, trying to be the first one that reaches the end. How do you feel about that? Uh, the biggest issue was, I saw this, you know, when I first talked about it, was it's 86 bucks. Uh, that's not inexpensive for a deluxe edition game that is more, you know, a mara thrash. We see that all the time for the deluxified Euros, and people have a less uh, threshold to buy it from that aspect of things. But I'd say the Amera Thrash overall tends to be more comfortable, you know, sub 60, if you will. It's expensive, but it's high quality, high quality components, wooden, I believe. There you go, 3,400 people. Are already in so are you gonna be one of them is the question and necro molds the war skirmish based game where you make clay play-doh-esque molds uh army wise that's raised nearly half a million freaking dollars people really must love this thing and they really must like the idea and the concept of this the rules are solid people were poo-pooing it over on reddit when they were discussing it and it got brought up i mean the rule book is very solid for what it is there's no ambiguity there's a very solid core behind it you can get a lot of variety in terms of how you're going to be actually molding it. You don't have to, like, card deck build, if you will, which is the issue with some of these games in the first place. But you have to put a little hand elbow grease in it and build your actual molds with the stuff that you have. And then you, when you run out, that's just how many characters you get, right? So I'm really surprised by this. This is one of those where every month or so we have one or two of those games that just completely blow the doors off of expectations. And if you would have told me that of all these games I just talked about in the campaign updates that this was going to be one of or near the highest one, I would have laughed you out of the room. But there we go. That's the unpredictability of crowdfunding. And that's why I freaking love talking about board games and crowdfunding in the first place. Yeah. Forsaken. Yeah, if I would have told you you had more than Forsaken, would you believe me? No, you wouldn't have. Uh, this is also ending soon. Uh, you know, it's going up with Kinfire. It's going up with Fate Forge. Those are most cooperative. This is head-to-head -head sandbox adventure, and it's from Game Trace. So do you need another app-based, narrative, scenario-driven, open-world game? Do you? If you do, great. There's a whole bunch of unlocks. There's a whole bunch of gameplay that's being unlocked with this as well. And if you want this and you love the idea and the concept of this, this probably looks like a really solid one with slightly more nuanced mechanics than some of the other ones we've seen in the past six months to a year. But it's, again, going to lead you to a triple digit penny, which is not inexpensive, anywhere between 150 to 200 plus dollars, including shipping. 
So that's really the question, right? And that's where I look at something like this compared to Merchant's Cove, as I just mentioned. I can get, right now, I saw someone selling for just sub $100 all of the all-in for Merchant's Cove the original, right? And the amount of content for that versus $200 of this. And I go, yeah, I mean, right? Like, that's 50% the price and probably equally or more content, I dare say. But it's completely different mechanically. So I'm comparing apples to oranges there. But it's just something to think about. If I can spend $200 on this, what else is $200 going to get me in the hobby? That's what I inevitably find myself talking about, as well as just table time. This requires more table time than other things. So yeah, looks like a very solid game. Again, I think people are going to be happy with it. I think it looks better than some of the others. And I think they haven't gone too gung-ho wild with some of it. And these are all lab limited right here, whatever that means that they're going to limit some of their availability. So take that for what you will. But Again, also take that for what you will. Yeah. There you go. Quick campaign updates. My kids are out there right now watching the Last Minions movie, which just started streaming, I guess. So I don't know. They found it and they're all sitting there like zombies with their little snacks and drinks. So uh, I got this done a little bit earlier in the evening than I was uh, originally thinking it was going to get done. So yeah, all things are good. I'm solo parenting right now. Solo parenting for like 60 plus hours with three kids, school uh, and work not work actually, off of work for a few days because of this. And it's just been crazy. Uh, kids have soccer tomorrow and it's going to be a mess. I'm going to be literally, the soccer games, blessing curse that the soccer games are at the same time and they're just like, I don't know, they're like a quarter of a mile, it feels like I'm walking between these fields. Just, it's literally like a three minute walk between these fields and I'm lugging around the two year old. I was doing it at practice last night. And I literally did it five times back and forth. And then the kid forgot his sweatshirt. And then we had to, you know, drive back to the, anyway. So that's, that's it. That's my weekend. So I haven't gotten anything played in the last couple of days because uh, by the time the kids are in bed, I am just exhausted. Last night was a mess. I'm sure tonight will be great. Uh, the two-year-old, the two-year-old spent literally half an hour this morning. I'm using literally a lot. I sound like my eight-year-old. Literally 35 minutes screaming for his mother this morning at 6 a.m. Well, while I was holding him, mind you. So it was it was a great start to the day. Can't make this stuff up, folks. If you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Or hopefully you don't, because then you haven't been in that position. Um, apart from that, I have a table, actually, of games right here that you can't see that I just did for the Patreon video. And you would know about them if you were subscribed to my Patreon of stuff that's upcoming. But it's, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Spoilers here. I'll give you a little, I'll give you a little hintsy of one of them. Anyway, that's all I got. This video went longer than I thought with the campaign updates and everything else. So uh, I need to go play some undisclaimed games that are coming to crowdfunding in the next uh, month and year. Because I've got one for next month and one for next year. So sentence works out. I'm rambling. That's all I got. We'll throw maybe a little bit of uh, outtakes here at the end. I don't remember if I'm going to do that. But if there's something here afterwards, then something fit the premise and the bill. But if there's not, well, stay classy. Have a great day. And hopefully... Have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Yes, buddy, of course you can get your we can get your milky.